In this video, I'll use Calculus 1 techniques to find the point on a curve in three-dimensional space that's closest to another given point. We're asked to find the point on the curve given by this vector-valued function that lies closest to the given point with coordinates 1, 1, 2. The curve, which turns out to be an ellipse shape, and the given point are graphed here. The point is just slightly off the plane of the ellipse. Finding the closest point on the curve amounts to minimizing distance. I want to find the distance between a point on the curve whose x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and z-coordinate are given here, and this point whose x, y, and z-coordinates are given here. So I'll write down the distance formula, take the difference in x values, square it, add the difference in y values, squared, and add the difference in z values, squared. Rather than minimize distance directly, it'll be easier to minimize distance squared. So I'll take the square of both sides. I'm going to call this function f of t, and I want to minimize it by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. Rather than expand out these expressions first before I take the derivative, I'm just going to take the derivative directly using the chain rule. Get, that gives me 2 times 5 cosine t minus 1 to the 1th power times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 5 sine t, plus 2 times 3 sine t minus 1 times the derivative of, of its inside, 3 cosine t, plus 2 times 4 sine t minus 2 times the derivative of its inside, 4 cosine t. Let me simplify this a little bit. I'm going to bring the 2 all the way out of each term and then distribute the terms. So that gives me negative 25 cosine t sine t plus 5 sine t from here and 9 sine t cosine t minus 3 cosine t from here Remember, I'm pulling the 2 all the way out. And finally, I have 16 sine t cosine t minus 8 cosine t from here. If I collect up all my sine t times cosine t terms, I see that they exactly cancel out. So my derivative simplifies to 2 times 5 sine t minus 11 cosine t. If I set that equal to 0, that means that 5 sine t has to equal 11 cosine t. In other words, sine t over cosine t has to equal 11 fifths. That is, I have that tan t has to equal 11 fifths. Now, I could solve for t here. It would have to be tan inverse of 11 fifths plus multiples of 2 pi or tan inverse of 11 fifths plus pi plus multiples of 2 pi. But in the end, I'm not actually interested in the value of t, like the time I would get to the point that's closest. I want the actual point that's closest. So I actually want the x values, y values, and z values, which means I'm interested in finding the values of 5 cosine t, 3 sine t, and 4 sine t. I can actually find candidates for sine t and cosine t by looking at a triangle without actually going through the value of t itself. This is my angle t, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Then I know my hypotenuse of my triangle must be 5 squared plus, uh, square root of 5 squared plus 11 squared, which is the square root of 146. Therefore, I know that either cosine of t is 5 over the square root of 46, and sine t is 11 over the square root of 146, right, because of adjacent over hypotenuse and opposite over hypotenuse. Or I could have that cosine of t is negative 5 over the square root of 146, and sine t is negative 11 over the square root of 146. That's because on the unit circle, 
there are actually two points that give us the tan of 11 fifths, one of them in the first quadrant and one of them in the third quadrant. Now I can use these values of cosine and sine to figure out my values of x, y, and z on my curve. The points are of the form 5 cosine t, 3 sine t, 4 sine t. So that gives us the following two possibilities. Just by plugging in these values for sine and cosine, or plugging in these values. Now from the picture, one of these points is probably up here and one is somewhere down here. It looks like the top point with the positive values of x, y, and z is going to be a distance minimizing point, and the point down here is going to be a distance maximizing. But we can confirm this by looking at the value of the derivative. If we're near the t value on the unit circle that's giving us the positive values of sine and cosine, and therefore the positive values for the x, y, and z of the point, if we're near this point, then as t increases, sine is getting bigger and cosine is getting smaller. So 5 sine t minus 11 cosine t, which was giving us 0, is now going to give us something positive and bigger than 0. So if I'm looking at a number line and I'm looking at the t value um, for cosine t equals 5 over square root of 146, sine t equals 11 over square root of 146. As t gets a little bigger than that, I'm getting a positive value for my derivative. And similarly, if t gets a little smaller than this, so a smaller angle in the unit circle, then sine is smaller, cosine is bigger, so this derivative will end up being negative, and I'll have a negative derivative on this side. Therefore, my function is going down and then up, so this point right here, which corresponds to this t value, that point right there is giving us a minimum. If, on the other hand, I look at the t value on the unit circle corresponding to this place on the unit circle, quadrant 3, that's the one that's giving me the negative values of sine and cosine, or the negative values of x, y, and z on the point on the curve. Now, as t increases, let's see, cosine is getting uh, closer to 0, and sine is getting closer to negative 1. So looking at the expression for the derivative, cosine is a negative number that's close to 0. So this is going to be a positive tiny number, whereas sine is close to negative 1. So this is going to be a larger negative number. So that derivative is going to be negative as t increases. So on my number line, if I look at the t value for where cosine t is negative 5, over square root of 146, and sine t is also negative, now, as t increases, my derivative is going negative. Whereas if t decreases, smaller angle, then my sine is getting pretty close to 0, but my cosine is pretty close to negative 1. So this is 0, and this is becoming negative 11 times a, close, a negative number, so a positive number. My derivative is becoming positive, and so my function is going up and then down, and I have a maximum. So this is going to be the maximum, the point at maximum distance. Now one thing that might be worrying you is normally when we do a maximization minimization problem, we do it on an interval. And we could use the interval from t equals negative 2 pi to pi, 2 pi here. If we did that, we'd feel obligated to check the endpoints as possible maximum and minimum values also. But I'm going to get around that by considering the interval of t from negative infinity to infinity and knowing that since the curve itself is periodic, the distance function is also periodic. So we don't actually have to check the endpoints because, because the distance function is also going to be oscillating. So we're going to be able to find the maximum and minimum distance by just looking at local max and mins arbitrarily truncating at a t value of negative 2 pi and 2 pi is not going to give us any additional candidates for maximum minimum values. One last detail, I wrote my points as vectors because I was thinking about the vector value function notation. 
I mean, that's fine as long as this, you're thinking of this vector as starting at the origin, and then this is describing the tip of the vector is its components give you the point in three space. But when we're talking about points, it might be a little less confusing to use the point notation and round off those angle brackets to make it look more like a point of three-dimensional space. This video used standard optimization techniques to find the point on a curve at minimum distance from another given point and at maximum distance from that given point.